Hello, my name's Olivia Barrett and I'm a qualified dentist and I work for Health Education and Improvement Wales and I'm here today to talk about career opportunities in dentistry. So the aims of today's session is going to be to highlight the different roles and career opportunities that are available within the dental team, uh, to demonstrate and give a broad overview of common dental procedures, to highlight the potential environments you could work in as a dental professional, and also to give advice to uh, potential uh, applicants to dental courses. So what is dentistry? Uh, dentistry is a part of medicine which treats the diseases of the mouth, the head and the face. Uh, common conditions which are treated by the dental team would include things that we're much more familiar with like tooth decay and gum disease but what people often don't realise is that we treat other conditions in dentistry like head and neck cancer and within specialties like orthodontics we align the jaws and the teeth. So just a very uh, simple uh, lesson in dentistry. Uh, there are normally people have 32 adult teeth normally give or take a few and uh, 20 baby teeth so this is just a picture basically a, a tooth that's kind of been cut down the middle and we can see what's going on inside the tooth so at the top of the tooth we have what's called enamel um, this is a very strong substance the idea being that things can't get through it uh, underneath the enamel there's dentine and then in the center of the tooth we have uh, what's called the pulp so this is the nerve and the blood vessels of the tooth. So some common dental procedures which you may be familiar with. So uh, you might have had a filling before. Uh, so the pictures on the left hand side are fillings being carried out. So um, on the far left we have a few teeth with these kind of black dots on. Uh, that is tooth decay which has been removed. The teeth have been numbed with an injection. The decay has been removed with a drill and then tooth coloured filling material has been placed in those kind of holes to fill that gap. And the same again with the middle picture. We can see the top middle picture. This is a back tooth, quite a big molar tooth uh, and the decay has been taken out of this tooth. Uh, quite a lot of tooth structure as well. Um, has been removed and then the a tooth coloured filling is placed uh, in these kind of cavities. Uh, scale and polish which is basically a professional clean done by a, a dental professional like a hygienist or a therapist. Uh, this is where we basically remove the plaque which has turned into calculus so it's got hard, can't really be removed by your toothbrush at home which is why you need to see the therapist or the dentist to remove this calculus and then the teeth are polished at the end of this procedure. More complex dental procedures like root canal treatment which is something the dentist would do. So uh, just going back to that that nerve, that pulp that's in the middle of the tooth, sometimes, sometimes that can get infected or it can die for lots of reasons. It can be quite painful sometimes for the patient. What needs to happen is we need to open up the tooth, uh, take out the infection or the dead nerve that's inside the tooth, clean it out with a really strong cleaning solution and then fill it up with um, a rubber material normally. Uh, and as you can see from this picture on the right hand side, it's quite a pernickety thing to do. Um, it requires a lot of manual dexterity and a lot of patience to make sure we get a great result for the patient. Other more complex dental procedures would be things like crowns or this is basically a cap that goes on top of the tooth to give it more kind of structural integrity. Uh, orthodontics, this is straightening teeth, aligning teeth. Um, so we can see in this picture, we've got these kind of train tracks on both the top and the bottom jaws to try and align the teeth and uh, to give this kind of perfect smile. Uh, dentists can also place implants and these are screws that go into um, the jaw um, uh, and this would uh, be quite a complex procedure to do. So skills required to be part of the dental team, it's really important that the dental team uh, are team players. They need to work with each other to get the most positive outcome for the patient. Dental team members need good manual dexterity. They need to be practical and creative. They need to be able to communicate effectively with people. And dental clinics can be very busy environments, so they need to be organised and thorough and committed to lifelong learning. So where could you work as a dental professional? So there's actually lots of places you could work. Um, you might work in a hospital, so um, in a dental hospital or even in kind of a general hospital in more of a maxillofacial department. 
Um, we have prison dentistry services as well. Uh, you might work at a general dental practice. So this would be kind of the, the general dental practice that you and I may be more familiar with. You may have gone for your regular checkups there every six months since you were quite young. And this is where quite routine dentistry like fillings and cleaning happens. Uh, you may choose to work in education and you may work at a university teaching kind of the future uh, dental professionals of tomorrow. You might work in dental public health and this is a role uh, which is really looking at uh, dental health but much more on a population level. So how do we improve everybody's dental health, not just that one individual patient? You might also choose to work in the community. So community clinics really um, treat patients. They, they treat a lot of children, a lot of child patients, but also patients with additional needs. So they might um, require a hoist to get into the dental chair because they're in a wheelchair or they might be quite anxious about dental treatment. And these sorts of patients will be seen in a community clinic. So there's lots of different places that you could work. So uh, I'm going to start off by talking about the dental nurse and then I'm going to go through all the different roles in dentistry. So the dental nurse, really they are there to provide chair side assistance and reassurance to both the clinician but also the patient. It's really important that they have excellent communication skills and a kind and caring manner and they're able to put patients at ease who often can be quite nervous about their treatment. They work really closely with the clinician to ensure that excellent patient care is delivered and it's possible that they can work in all settings, including hospital, community, prisons, dental practice, and also in oral health education, which I'll go on to a little bit later. So what do you need to do to become a dental nurse? So uh, mostly you will need to do a dental nursing diploma. This is a minimum of 18 months and a maximum of three years. Um, and during this program, you would work sometimes three, sometimes four days in a dental practice, uh, carrying out kind of routine dental nursing duties and then either half a day a week or one day a week you will study normally at college uh, and work towards your dental uh, nursing qualification so you'll have a salary um, during this program you'll need maths and English GCSE as a minimum uh, and the assessment of this program is normally in three parts in practical and written exams and also an online portfolio and there really is an opportunity there as a dental nurse to extend and further your career with what we call extended duties and you must be prepared for lifelong learning and to always want to improve your skills. So the dental nurse and extended duties so this is is really a way that you can complete further training and become even more employable to um, kind of dental practices and hospitals so you can um, take a qualification to learn to be able to take dental x-rays on patients um, you can learn to take impressions, so moulds of the mouth for things like retainers and whitening trays, uh, that's teeth whitening trays. You can also learn to apply high strength fluoride. So this is a fluoride varnish medication that we paint onto the teeth. The idea being that it absorbs into them and strengthens them um, and therefore preventing kind of sugar getting into the teeth and causing decay. There's also a few other courses you can do as a qualified dental nurse. So you can train to be a sedation dental nurse. Um, so sedation is, you can see this picture on the top left, this uh, little boy is having, they've got their nose bubble um, on and they're kind of breathing in what we, you might know as the happy air. It relaxes the patients and it makes us more able to do the treatment with the patients much more relaxed and, and at ease. And you can train to be a dental nurse to help the dentist or dental therapist doing this kind of sedation. You can also train to be a, a special care dentistry dental nurse um, and this is a dental nurse who will have additional qualifications to deal with those patients that you might see in a community clinic. For example, the patients who are a bit more anxious or they're in a wheelchair and require um, additional things like a hoist. You might also do an oral health promotion extended duties course and this can be uh, really open a lot of doors to become an oral health educator. So this uh, allows you to teach your patients how to improve their oral health. So how to brush their teeth properly, what toothpaste to use, how to floss their teeth. Um, and a lot of dental nurses who've done this course can then go on to teach uh, in childcare settings and teach children how to um, improve their oral hygiene. So moving on to the next role now, uh, the dental hygienist. Um, so the dental hygienist will have uh, din done some training for uh, normally two-year diploma um, 
or potentially longer. And their role really is to focus on prevention of dental disease. So they will be able, they will have their own patients, normally their own surgery and work with the dental nurse. Um, they will be able to professionally clean teeth in a procedure called a scale and polish. Um, they will be able to apply protective fissure sealants. These are kind of white coatings that we put normally on the back teeth. We seal them up, the idea being that um, sugar can't get into these teeth and cause decay. And they'll also be able to apply that high fluoride varnish, which um, I talked about earlier. Um, they'll mainly work in dental practice, but they can also work in hospital and the community setting as well. So what do you need to do to become a hygienist? Well, as I said, they will normally have completed a diploma in dental hygiene. Um, and this, there is one course in the UK that is a 12 month uh, diploma in dental hygiene, but most courses will be at least two years. Um, and you will work with real life patients from early on in this course. Um, entry requirements, it can be very competitive. Um, I would check the individual university and educational setting kind of criteria to make sure um, you're looking at their admissions criteria and you've actually got what they need. So um, some of them will require a dental nursing qualification. Some of them will require an A-level in biology. To be a hygienist, you really must have a calm and caring nature about you. It's really important that you're able to establish that rapport with people that you've just met because you need to teach them how to care for their teeth and you can have a really positive impact in their life um, through improving their oral hygiene. So the next role is a dental therapist. So a dental therapist will normally have been to university for three years and have a degree in dental hygiene and therapy. And they are able to do a lot of uh, the dentistry that the dentist can do. So they can numb up teeth, they can do fillings on teeth, they can even remove baby teeth, do nerve treatments on baby teeth, place caps on baby teeth and do all the cleaning and polishing that the hygienist can do as well. Uh, so a therapist is likely to work in practice, but there's also opportunities in hospital, community, even education, academ academia and public health. Um, and the therapist, again, will have their own surgery working with a dental nurse. Um, so this picture on the right hand side is um, some work that a therapist could do. So this is something called composite bonding. Composite is a white filling material and we can see on the top uh, picture these kind of teeth at the front the two teeth at the front of they might have had a bit of a knock they've they've got a, uh, a bit of a chip on both of them and what you can do is build up these teeth uh, with the white filling material and it gives a really great result for the patient the green thing in the the top of the picture is called a rubber dam and this is basically has some holes in that you pop the teeth through and it basically separates out from what the dentist or the therapist is doing from the things in the mouth like the saliva and the tongue which can get in the way and it makes things a lot easier for everybody. You can see the bottom picture they've taken off the rubber dam and they've got this really nice result which will have had a hugely positive impact on this patient's smile and probably the way the patient feels. But you can see this sort of work really requires uh, from the therapist or the dentist, they need that manual dexterity, they need that creativity, um, that hand-eye coordination is absolutely crucial for this sort of role. So how would you become a dental therapist? As I said, you would normally do a three-year degree in dental hygiene and therapy, full-time, on-placement treating patients quite early on. And once you've graduated, you can go straight into work, but you can also take part in foundation training where you will be in a general dental practice with a mentor part-time a few days a week. And this will be for the year after you graduate and your mentor will help you and kind of guide you through that year. You might work in practice, hospital, and also in the community. So moving on uh, to the role of a dentist. So a dentist will have trained for at least five years at university. They will combine expert knowledge of head and neck anatomy with excellent clinical and surgical skills. Uh, they will be able to do all the things that the hygienist can do and the therapist can do. But they can also do some more complex procedures. They can remove adult teeth and perform root canal treatments. As amongst plenty of other things. Um, and they can work in, in a variety of dental settings. So how do you become a dentist? Well, becoming a dentist is very, it's highly competitive entry to university in the UK. I would strongly advise you look at university dental schools prospectuses and have a look at what their admissions criteria is. As I said, it's a five year degree and normally from the end of year two, you will start working on real life patients on placement. Um, if you haven't, normally these universities will require at least chemistry and biology A-level. 
Again, check the prospectuses for absolute up-to-date, accurate information on that. But some universities also offer what's called a pre-dental year. And this is for um, applicants who haven't, they've come from a non-science background. So they might have done A-levels in arts um, and they have decided they'd want to do dentistry. So look at that option if you don't have the correct A-levels. Um, and after you've done your five-year degree, after a few more, more years of working, you can also train to be a specialist. So there are 13 dental specialties um, and they're very varied. There's lots of different things you can do. This is a really brief overview. But if we look at the picture on the top left, this, this tooth is kind of buried underneath the gum. It's a wisdom tooth. Um, and what to take this out, this would probably require a specialist, even a consultant to do a surgical procedure on this tooth. Um, so we would have to numb it up, get it nice and numb, make a little cut in the gum, pull the gum back. Um, the tooth might be buried under some bone, so you might need to remove some of the bone. Uh, take the tooth in, uh, probably split it in half, uh, take it out and then put some stitches in afterwards. So this really does require a high level of manual dexterity. Uh, the picture in the middle on the top, that's uh, someone who's having orthodontic treatment. We've talked a little bit about that as a specialty. Uh, the picture on the right hand side, this is not a real skull, but this is just to demonstrate one of the specialties, um, which is oral and maxillofacial surgery. So we abbreviate this normally to MaxFax. And MaxFax is, um, so a consultant who's a MaxFax consultant will be dual qualified. So they will have done a degree in dentistry, and then they will have also gone and done a degree in medicine and probably years of further training. And they will be able to treat patients who um, have head and neck cancer um, from the surgery aspect of that and also the rehabilitation aspect of that um, but also patients that have been injured in things like road traffic accidents um, and they will train for a very long time to get to where they're at but it's just showing the scope of where you can go with a dental degree you could also move into kind of pathology and microbiology um, where you'd be looking at samples under a microscope so samples taken from a patient's mouth to kind of diagnose and, and figure out what they've got so this is often used in head and neck cancer we take a biopsy of a, of a, um, a bit of tissue from a patient's mouth put it under the microscope and uh, diagnose whether that patient has cancer or not you could also become a pediatric dentist and work with child patients as well so moving on to the next role, um, the role of the orthodontic therapist, which is is a relatively new role in dentistry, but it's 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 becoming increasingly more important, particularly in orthodontics. Um, so the orthodontic therapist will work with the orthodontist. They're a key team member of that team, and these are the the people that treat patients who have braces. So they can do lots of different things. They can adjust braces. They can prepare tooth surfaces for braces. They can even place retainers. So a retainer is something that goes on the tooth. Um, it can be removable or fixed to the tooth. And it goes on the teeth after the patient has had the braces. So after the braces have been put on and the teeth are in a straight line, the retainers are then put on to make sure that those teeth stay in the right place and don't go back to their old place. Um, the therapist can give advice about braces and they can even take molds so impressions of the teeth this list is not exhaustive there's lots of other things the orthodontic therapist can do as well so it's really varied so how do you become an orthodontic therapist so it's becoming quite a popular choice for qualified dental nurses to go in to do a diploma in orthodontic therapy um, you will need as a minimum maths and science GCSE but again check the individual university requirements it's a 12-month diploma in orthodontic therapy um, and after you've qualified you there's lots of opportunities for work, be that in practice, in hospital or community. So moving on to the final two roles uh, in dentistry. So a dental technician is a technician that works in a laboratory normally, and they will create appliances that are specifically made to fit each patient. So these can be things like the caps, so that's the crowns that go on the teeth, or the fake teeth, so the dentures or the, the bridges. A dental technician, you can see from this picture on the right hand side, they will have extremely good hand-eye coordination and, and creative flair to be able to create something like this um, with immense attention to detail. Uh, and they really will have an in-depth knowledge of the materials that they're using. So ceramics and acrylics, they'll really know about the material they're using and the properties of it so they can understand how to get the best, the, the best result for the patient and the appliance. 
Dental technology is becoming increasingly digitalized. I think it's something to to kind of recognize if you're going into this career, enjoying working with computers and digital scanning and platforms like that um, would be really useful in this career. Um, there's lots of scope as a technician to either run your own laboratory, be employed in a lab or even self-employed, or you could also work in a hospital laboratory as well. So how do you become a dental technician? Uh, some technicians will complete a diploma uh, or even a degree in dental technology. Sometimes this can be a three-year part-time degree um, whilst you work at the same time. So you might do kind of one day a week um, studying at university and the rest of the week you'll be working in a dental laboratory. So it can be quite a nice way of being paid a salary whilst also kind of upskilling and training to be a registered dental technician. Um, there's also a BTEC national diploma that you can do as well. So I'd have a Google. Um, the requirements for each course do vary, but on average, it's math, science, English or Welsh language GCSE and two A-levels, one of which needs to be a science subject. So that could be an option. Uh, a clinical dental technician. So this is just a little bit different to a dental technician. So the clinical dental technician can do everything that the dental technician does. They have, they really do have those, all those skills to make those amazing appliances that fit in patients' mouths. Um, but they also are able to treat patients directly uh, for some types of patients. So if the patient doesn't actually have any teeth and they require what, what we call a complete denture. So that's what's in the picture here. Uh, this is a full set of dentures on the top and the bottom. Uh, then the clinical dental technician can make that for the patient without the patient having to see a dentist at all. So this is a really ideal for a career for somebody who wants to have a bit of a mix. So they, they want to work in a laboratory, really want to use their kind of uh, practical skills and creativity, but they also want to work with patients as well. So what should you do if you want to be a clinical dental technician? So there is one course um, up in the north of England at UCLan, which is a clinical dental technology course. It's a three year degree. Um, so that could be an option. But there's also um, across the country, there's other kind of degrees just in uh, dental technology and also BTEC national diplomas as well. So I'd have a Google. Entry requirements can vary per course. Um, and if you already are a dental technician, there is a uh, kind of scope out there to then become a clin clinical dental technician by doing further training and courses. Um, so the HIW Careersville uh, website um, has just launched a new dental building. I'd encourage you to go and visit that. So this is an online learning platform with a virtual street with lots of different buildings. And each building um, contains content and information about what it's like working in things like nursing, in medicine. Um, and we now have a building in dentistry. So I, I would encourage you to go and have a look at this website. So just to finish, I'd like to give some tips and advice about those who are applying to um, dental courses. So if you're thinking about applying for a five year dental degree or a three year dental hygiene and therapy degree or even a hygiene diploma, um, this is just some help and advice um, that I kind of would have liked to have known when I was applying for dental school. So um, I would have a think about what you want to do. I would not don't embark up on something if you are not really interested in it. Dentistry is a very long time to study, it's five years and if it doesn't really interest you then I would consider looking at something else. Talk to people, ask for advice, um, gain some work experience to make up your mind. If you're thinking oh, I'd like to be a dental nurse but I'm just not quite sure, do some work experience, do a couple of days in a dental practice and if you think yes this is right for me then go ahead and kind of pursue that career pathway. It's okay not to have a plan at this stage. Um, I think don't rush into anything. If you really do feel like you need to take a gap year after your A-levels and have a think, gain some more work experience, some more life experience, that's okay too. Um, there's no rush. Be realistic about your grades. Um, dental hygiene and therapy and dentistry are very competitive and you need really good grades to get into them. So I'd have a look at the university prospectuses and see what they say is their kind of average offer that they make and if you feel that if you know deep down you won't get those grades then um, don't go down that pathway um, if it's just not realistic it's not fair on you and you don't want to be disappointed on results day um, investigate NHS bursaries this can this is something that um, 
uh, you could look into. There is some funding available for um, for dental hygiene and therapy courses. So I would encourage you to go and have a look at that. And as I've said, read the admissions criteria of these courses. So if you have a university prospectus or an online web page and a dental school says we require two weeks work experience in a dental practice, make sure you have that because they really what they write is they will follow that so if they say they demand two weeks you need to get it otherwise they won't give you an interview um so just read that criteria really carefully and follow it so some tips and advice on gaining some work experience which I get asked a lot about because it's very difficult to get work experience I would say you need a variety of experience um so not just working in general dental practice but working across, um, you know, working with lots of different dental team members. So a therapist, a hygienist, a dental nurse, even administration staff, practice manager, all this will really help your application. But an experience in different settings. So in primary care dentistry, so that's in general dental practice, but also in secondary care dentistry. So that's that would be in a dental hospital or in a maxillofacial unit. Um, that would be fantastic for your application. And experience ideally in community as well. Uh, keep a record of your work experience and how many days you've done and where you've done it. Make notes and reflect upon what you've seen. Be very careful about confidentiality. It's really important that you never record any patient data at all. Um, and whoever you're doing the work experience with, you need to get kind of um, permission to do this. But it would be very helpful for you to write a small reflection. You know, if you saw a root canal treatment Write down what you saw and how it made you feel and why it made you think, I want to do this as a career. Because it's those kind of things that are going to inform your personal statement and help you when you have, hopefully, an interview for dental school. You need to demonstrate ongoing volunteering throughout sixth form. So this is not just kind of one Saturday morning, I went to a care home for two hours and made tea for people. What the universities want to see is long term commitments in a caring capacity. So they want you to demonstrate that for nine months, every Saturday morning, you went to this care home because um, it shows that you are reliable and you're honest and you're caring and you're committed because really for these courses, either a three year course or a five year course, we need commitment to kind of learning and that you're reliable. Uh, so volunteering is good to have on your application. People do volunteering at St. John's Ambulance, I've said in a care home, but also in a charity shop. The best work experience would be working on a Saturday morning in dental practice. That would be brilliant, but that is obviously quite difficult to get and it's hard to manage whilst also doing your A-levels as well. So how would you get work experience? Most people that I know um, got their work experience from asking their own dentist. If they've known their dentist for, you know, at this point, uh, 16 years, then um, you can always ask them and they might be able to help you. I would pester people. I would ask your teachers at school and I would write letters to local dentists and local dental therapists saying, please, can I come and do some work experience? And when you are doing the work experience, make sure you're useful, you know, offer to uh, go and make the dentist or the therapist a cup of tea, offer to take uh, those things to the post office that need taking, be an asset to the team because they will say, yes, okay, you can come back for another week, you know, so um, it's about being useful. Get proof of your work experience. Um, make sure uh, you have confirmation. If you've done two days in a practice, ask the dental professional to write a letter confirming that you have done this because you may be asked for an interview. So uh, I've just created this timeline just to kind of, uh, for those people who are currently in year 12, just so you can kind of understand the pathway if you are considering applying for university. Um, so at the moment, you'll have done your AS levels and you'll be kind of going into the summer holidays. Now, the deadline to apply to dental school for the five year BDS course is the 15th of October. So by the 15th of October, you need your personal statement sorted, all your references sorted. School will help you, um, but it, you don't actually have long. So during the summer holidays, I would be taking every opportunity you can to gain as much work experience as possible because you won't have much time once you're kind of back in the swing of things at school um you need to start working on your personal statement which I'll talk about a little bit later and you need to do the UCAT exam again I'll talk about that a bit later 
And I personally would start interview prepping if you really feel that you are hitting all the admissions criteria that's in that prospectus for um, the five-year BDS program. There's no reason why you won't get an interview if your personal statement is is brilliant and you you do well on your UCAT. So I would start prepping for your interview now. So start practicing interview questions like why dentistry? Why would you make a good dentist? Why should we give you a place? Uh, tell me about your work experience. Um, sometimes these universities don't give a lot of time when they do tell you that you've got an interview. I know people that had found out they had an interview kind of five days after they've been notified. Five days just isn't really long enough to prepare for this interview when you're also having to go to college as well. Um, so that's why I would prepare quite early for the interview. If you just do a little bit kind of every day or so, it'll build up quite quickly and you'll have quite a strong interview technique. Um, normally, the universities will interview between November and April. Um, in January 2023, that is when you will might have to do some resets if you're doing any of your AS modules. And you'll also have to put down your fifth choice. So the way it works when you're applying to dentistry and medicine is you get five choices, but four of them can only be the dental course. So the five year BDS program. So then in the January, you need to decide what you want to be as your fifth choice. And I would recommend choosing this quite wisely. Uh, some people don't put anything, um, but be realistic. Um, some people put pharmacy, some people put dental hygiene and therapy, which um, it can be tricky because that is still a very competitive course to get onto, but it could be a good backup option. Some people put biomedical sciences as well. You need to think about if you do end up doing that course, would you do that course? And then would you do another degree in dentistry after, which is quite common for people to do? Um, in which case, so I have a friend who did a pharmacy degree for three years and then did a dental degree. And during their dental degree, they were able to fund it working as a pharmacist on the weekends and in the evenings and again for dental hygiene and therapy so it's something to think about pick that fifth choice quite wisely may and june 2023 the priority should off obviously be getting the best grades possible to meet um, any offers you've been given um, and in august you will find out your exam results and hopefully you will have uh, good news and be off to university So writing your personal statement, um, my advice would be start early. When you get back to school in September, everyone will be writing their personal statements. And because your deadline for dentistry is the 15th of October, um, you only have kind of six weeks when you get back to school. So I would start early. It has to be 47 lines and 4,000 characters. That's the maximum that it can be. Um, and they're very specific about that. I would encourage lots of people to read it, to proofread it, ensure there's no spelling, grammatical errors. Read the personal statement out loud because that's often what the admissions tutors will do to really get a sense of who you are as a person. Say why you want to do this course, why you'd be good at the role and give examples. Show your passion for dentistry. You know, say, I want to be a dentist because I've seen this and I really like this. Um, I've had experience of this and I think I'll be good in this role because it will help me. Um, I'm, I'm a people person. I like talking to people. Never lie, particularly about your work experience. You will get caught out. Dentistry is an extremely small world, so you need to be careful what you write on that and make sure it's completely accurate. Show that you understand what you are applying for and that you appreciate that these courses will be challenging. You know, a five-year course as, as a dental student is a long slog. It is hard work. And I don't think there's anything wrong with saying, I know this is going to be difficult, but I've got experience to show, um, to demonstrate that I am, you know, more than capable of the challenge. And also give examples to show your manual dexterity. So lots of people do artwork or crocheting or cake decorating. Just a little note on the university clinical aptitude test. So this is for people who are applying for the five year course. Um, you have to do this over the summer and booking open to book this exam on the 20th of June um, and the testing starts on the 11th of July. You do have to pay for this exam. I'm not quite sure how, it, how much it is, but make sure if you are applying for the five year course, you get this exam done over the summer. Thank you very much and best of luck.